Hello everybody, my name is Smart and today we will be looking how to design IR filters using the pole zero placement method. We will be designing 4 filters, low pass, high pass, band pass and band soft filters and we will be given some specifications that we need to follow while designing these filters. So let's get started. So first we will uh, make the design the first order low pass filter and we are given that the sampling rate is 360Hz and the 3 dB cutoff frequency is 40Hz and there must be a 0 gain at 180Hz and since we are designing a low pass filter this is obvious so since we are designing low pass filter we need the attenuation that the high, high frequencies to be very uh, high so the attenuation must be like attenuation must be very high and to do that we will place a 0 at the higher frequencies so in the in terms of this pole placement method a 0 must be kept at z equal to minus 1 because at this point we get the fs by 2 frequencies which is 180 hertz in this case and those frequencies will be attenuated the most and at exactly 180 hertz we will get a 0 magnitude frequency and to make the frequencies of the lower, lower side to be uh, high we will place one pole at a uh, value at uh, on the real axis and uh, to determine the value of the this pole we uh, we need we uh, use the cutoff frequency because the placement of the pole will uh, determines the cutoff frequency of the filter so while uh, so to determine the location of the pole we use this approximate formula uh, where alpha is the pole and this is all given to us and if we calculate it we get 0 0.3 and uh, this means that the pole must be at z equal to 0 0.3 on the real axis for the cutoff frequency to be 40 hertz and since we are designing low pass filter we must have a 0 at z equal to minus 1 to so that the higher frequencies are alternated also since we want the maximum magnitude to be 1 we multiply the whole transfer function with a k and we define k such that the maximum value of this function is 1 and k is given like this 1 minus alpha by 2 and we get this value so the overall transfer function can be written in, in this form and you can see that we have a 0 at minus 1 and we have a pole at 0 0.3 now uh, since this is a very simple equation and we are using this approximate formula to find alpha it is very very trivial to find the exact value of alpha by doing some calculations so by using the definition of a cutoff filter cutoff frequency the h of j omega becomes 1 by root 2 where the cutoff frequency uh, where we have the cutoff frequency so replacing the, the transfer function here and replacing z by e raised for j omega which which may which makes it the uh, frequency response and we take the modulus and we equate it to 1 by root 2 and we replace the value of k here and then we put equal to 1 by root 2 now we can expand this by replacing e raised for j omega by cos omega plus j sin omega and replacing and uh, just and assuming that alpha is real so we, when we take the modulus it will treat it as a real value and we can just cross multiply and solve and squares take squares and roots and what we will end up with is alpha is equal to secant of omega plus or minus tan omega and this is because we will get a quadratic and when we take the roots we will get two roots and when we solve for this and omega is just 2 pi fc by fs because it we are talking about the DTFT here and we get two values of uh, alpha here one value is 0 0.466 and the other value is 2 point something and since we want this filter uh, we want the, the pole to be within the unit circle so that the system could be stable and not go off to infinity uh, what we do is we disregard the other root and we take alpha 0 to 0 0.466 so a better transfer function that we get a more accurate one than the approximate value that we got here we get this and the, as you can see if we plot both of them we will get a much accurate plot for this transfer function as you will see uh, now and so summarizing we have the both at minus 1 and uh, 0 at 0 0.46
we have the zeros at zero point uh, we have the zeros at minus one and poles at zero point four six six. And when we plot the magnitude, this is the magnitude response and the phase response. And as you can see, it is a low pass filter. Uh, the cutoff frequency is at approximately at 40 hertz as uh, it was required. This is the phase response. And looking at the pole zero plot, we have one zero at minus one and we have one uh, pole at that this required frequency uh, 0 0.466. So it's close to that. We can find the difference equation by multiplying, cross multiplying each sides and taking the inverse Fourier transform. We get this as the uh, difference equation. Now we can apply this on real world signals such as the ECG and PPG waveforms and uh, you can see we get if this is the ECG input signal this is the output of the low pass filter. Similarly uh, the input of the PPG signal is this we get the output of this and as you can see since all the outputs are very similar to each other this means that the PPG and ECG signals usually contain low frequency dominant components and removing the high frequency dominant component doesn't make any difference much difference in the output waveform so now we'll, we'll design the first order half pass filter high pass filter and for this we we'll, we have given the 3 dB cutoff frequency as 1 hertz and we have zero gain at 0 hertz and since we design high pass filter we need the lower frequency to be zero so we place a zero at z equal to 1 which corresponds to uh, the frequencies of zero and again we can design the transfer function by this approximate formula we can do the exact thing that we did above and find the more uh, accurate value of alpha but this approximate value works very well in this case we can also find k and we get this transfer function we have one uh, 0 at 1 and we have one pole at 0 0.9825 this is the uh, pole's uh, magnitude plot and if you measure this bandwidth this cutoff frequency it will be very close to 1 hertz this is the phase response and looking at the pole zero plot you can see that the zeros and the pole is are very close to each other but the zero there but the poles are not exactly not on the unit circle it is a, they are a little bit behind so that the frequency response doesn't go to infinity and this is the difference equation that we get now we can apply this difference equation on trigger world ECG and PPG signals and as you can see here since the lower frequency DC components have been removed this this whole spectrum is this whole signal is very much centered around the zero while this is not much centered and this is the same thing that you can see from uh, this PPG signal perspective this signal is very much centered around zero but this is not and uh, as you can see if you, if, you, if you look take a closer inspection at this you can see that the high frequency components have not been removed and that is what was desired now we will design the sec second order of bandpass filter we don't don't have a first order bandpass filter so we design a second order bandpass filter and a bandpass filter allows a uh, band of frequencies to pass uh, band of frequencies to pass and for to design this filter we have given the 3 dB bandwidth as 14 hertz and the narrow uh, cent narrow pass band centered at f0 is equal to 30 hertz so in this case we want the uh, zero gain at zero hertz and one eighty hertz. So we'll place one zero at z equal to one and one zero at z equal to minus one. And since we need the frequencies that centered around this with this bandwidth uh, to have to have uh, a high magnitude and less attenuations. So what we do is we place a pole near to this frequency exactly not on the unit circle just around the, and we can decide the distance from the center of the z plane by using this bandwidth and assuming that the pole is r e j omega we get r to be this and we it, it's equal to 0 0.8778 and we get theta to be equal to this because we want theta to be exactly on the centered at f0 so we use f0 here and since we want the magnitude to be uh, 1 
maximum magnitude to be 1 we use the with this value of k and we get this 0.119 also to point here since we this is a real signal and we making this filter for real world signals we the we need two poles at i e j omega and i e raised to power minus j omega so that we have two conjugate root of poles and the system can be physically realized in real world and we get this transfer function looking at the magnitude response you can see that this is a very good uh, band pass filter the cutoff frequency the band the bandwidth is as was required by the specifications and we have zero attenuations at lower frequencies and very high frequencies this is the frequency response and this is the plot uh, pole zero plot and as you can see we have two conjugate poles to make this system physically realizable and we have two pole zeros here so that there are no uh, attenuations there are the attenuations are zero for the uh, higher frequencies and lower frequencies now we are taking the same equation and mul cross multiplying and taking the inverse Fourier transform we get this difference equation and we can apply this to ECT and PPG waveforms so if it, this is the in input ECG signal we get this out bandpass filter output as you can see it is very much not like the original signal this is mainly because since we are uh, filtering out the lower frequencies which are the dominant in ECG and PBG waveforms the characteristics of the original signal have been lost here and this the same thing can be seen for the PPG signal although it retains some uh, mid frequent characteristics so now we will design the second order band stop filter the, in the band stop filter we have one frequency which the filter does not allow to pass a range of and the, a few frequencies neighboring to it and it allows all the other frequencies to pass and we, we have to the 3 dB bandwidth for this filter is given as 4 hertz and the narrow stop band standard at F0 is 50 hertz so what we will do is we will use this equation to get the value of R in theta as before and since we need the frequency the poles to be centered at F0, we take this, we, take, we calculate as this, and K is uh, determined by uh, making the maximum amplitude of this transfer function to be 1, and we get 0 0.966. The poles will be located at the R e raised to power g omega and R e raised to power minus g omega, and both will be conjugate, and the zeros will be located at e raised to power g omega and e raised to power minus g omega, and we are doing this because we want the frequency at e raised to power j omega to be exactly 0 so we are placing a 0 here but since we want the frequencies to be high for all of the frequencies we are placing a pole also at that frequency but at some distance from it so that it, the other frequ neighboring frequencies are also affected by it and coming to the magnitude response we get this and as you can see at 50 hertz there is a sharp fall in the bank response and it is like that we are uh, it is just like a uh, band stop filter where we are stopping the 50 hertz frequencies this is the phase response and coming to the pole zero plot you can see that the zeros are located at exactly the frequency that we need to uh, stop and the poles are located here so that the other frequencies can be magnified the difference equation is again calculated by cross multiplying the transfer function and taking the inverse Fourier transform we get this and we can apply this by we can take the uh, ECG and PPG waveforms and using this equation we can find the filter output so this is the ECG signal and if we apply it to the band we get this and as you can see it is almost similar to the original ECG signal that, that means that there are not many 50 hertz frequencies which were stopped by the filter in these frequencies and and if you closely see we had some varying components in this region but we don't we have them here so this is this one effect that you can see but mostly their outputs are very similar because usually ECG and PPG waveforms don't extend up don't have dominant frequencies up to 50 hertz and this is the pending section where you can find all the code 
that I have written for each of the filters and each of the plots that we got and uh, thank you all for watching thank you